And we're back. And we should have sponsors for this segment. And we do. And I'm going to read them right now. And they would be Tenable Network Security, the creators of Nessus, the world's best vulnerability scanner. Check out the new Nessus Enterprise and Enterprise Cloud. Engage your IT department in the vulnerability management process today. And also by Black Squirrel, pen test networks from your browser. Exploit the limits of network security through just a browser. Have a Chrome exploit in your toolkit? Good, but for the rest of us, there's Black Squirrel. Visit blacksquirrel.io for more information. Welcome back, everyone, to this episode of Security Weekly. I am here. Our, our numbers have grown here in the studio. Mm-hmm. It's uh, time to cover your butthole and check your fly. That's right. The safe right. Is here. Right. Hey, how's it going, guys? Thanks for having me on. It's nice to have you here in the studio, dude. I am uh, dude, honored is, to have this you Dude, this is guest. amazing. Nice facility Thank here. You. I love I'm it. I'm glad you were able to make it down. You made the, the drive down from Boston. So. Yeah, it's, I mean, it was like 16 hours. It was terrible. But, I mean, other than that, I mean, <laughs> other than that it's fine. <laughs> yeah, you know, you look at the map, and these states are really little, and then you get in a car. Yeah. <laughs> <Takes> forever. <laughs> all hell breaks. Well, we hooked you up with a cigar and a beer, so Hey, he's, I'm all good now. That's now. all I need. Uh, Alex is here with us. Welcome, yep. Alex. And Alex works with you at Trusted Sec? He does. Alex runs our GRC practice at Trusted Sec. Excellent. Yeah. Excellent. Very cool. Um, now, That's Dave, so weird to say. Have you s- hear you say? He runs our mm. practice. Our GRC I, got, I got people practice. now. I know. It's, it's insane. Like, I got a practice lead for like our pen testing group. I got a practice lead for leopard thongs. I mean, it's just a matter of different, wow. you know, different practices. I can only imagine the internal emails. <laughs> oh, dude. <laughs> no, you can't even imagine. Trust me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We have a separate distro called Trusted Second Noi that is just for horrible emails. And that's it. That's all that we do all day long, pretty much. It's just send horrible. Mem- we had, uh, you know, Rick Hayes who. Uh, yes, I know Rick. Yes. Yeah. So R- Rick put it on Facebook. Like, I think it was like the second or third day he started at Trusted Second. was like, I have seen more memes in my entire, or in my entire two days at Trusted Second than I have in my entire life. Nice. That was a good accomplishment, I thought. I mean, I, that's one of the bucket lists that I was proud of to that. get. Yeah. Absolutely. Yep. See, we have the same same thing, but it goes to all the the, the consultants. So, I mean, <laughs> it's just our regular consultant mailing list. That's awesome. Well, I was saying before the show, Dave, that one of the reasons I admire you, there's a lot of reasons, but one is conceivably... No underwear? Well, no underwear. Okay. And uh, conceivably, you should be like the world's most stressed out person right now, running your own company, mm-hmm. planning one of the largest conferences on the East Coast, appearing on Fox News... Coming down here for the podcast, but you're not, dude. You're like text to Jack. We're like, so what are you wearing? <laughs> <laughs> Baby. Well, well I mean, that was an honest question, though. I mean, yeah, I, can, I still true. can be stressed, and I still want to know what Jack's wearing. <laughs> that's true. That's true. <laughs> but no, you're, you're very relaxed for a, a man in your position, which I greatly admire. So. Oh, thanks, guys. I, you know, it's it's you know the thing is, <laughs> man, it's his about position, missionary. <laughs> nice, Jack. Nice. <laughs> it's really doggy style. <laughs> yeah, a little bit. <laughs> a little bit. <laughs> well, you could switch. Yeah. Reverse ah. switch. You know, like you could, do that, you could do the maneuver yeah. where like you hop up and turn around at the same time, <laughs> and then you're good, right? Because da- then you don't have to. You, don't have to is, you get Dave and I in the same. It's like when Dave and I are in front yes. of the counter at Caesars checking into the room together, yeah. <laughs> dude. It was. I couldn't stop laughing. I still like think back to that moment and like I, here. I giggle. And they're like, "Why are you giggle?" I'm just thinking about the time Dave and I were at the, t- the well, check-in so counter. And then, then it's usually followed up by the raging boner. But that's <laughs> yes. the story altogether. Well, yeah. somehow, somehow, you know, we've told the story. I think enough to where like it's become like so resonant in my mind that I actually think that we thought. You know, I think in my head like we actually jumped on the bed naked. It's a mem. Yeah, it's really what it is. Yeah. We created our own mem. We did, and, and it's in my mind. So like I, I picture us just jumping on the bed naked all the time now. I, 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 I do at least that. twice a day. <laughs> and, and, I, and I've got to correct you. It's meme. Oh, meme. meme. Yeah, so. you know, I always get that confused. It's like meme, mem, meme, mem, meme, 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 meme. So, uh, <laughs> Dave, DerbyCon this year. <laughs> yeah. We're very excited. Um, the Is that that smell Guys, is? I got some bad news on DerbyCon. It's, it's canceled. canceled. It's canceled. <laughs> okay. Damn it. Now we have to talk about. Heart bleed. Everyone drinks. He said it. No, j- Paul just has to drink. He's the only one that said it. <laughs> I like that sound. Ah, I know. <laughs> Especially from Paul. <laughs> no, uh, DerbyCon's going very well. We have uh, some some epic things and um, that we're still planning that haven't been announced yet. Uh, and one of them, Ooh, which I don't want to, I don't want to, I don't want to say it yet because it'll jinx it, and it's so close to happening um, that. That's what she said. It'll. <laughs> uh, I've never had that before. So yeah, right. yeah, yeah. Yeah. Usually, I usually wouldn't know. Put, with that. Yeah. Usually, it's so, usually, it's so far done by that point that. <laughs> yeah, it's. So, D- Dave, what's the theme for this year's Derby Cup? So the the name of the theme for this year, you know, every year we. Uh, so last year it was um, what was it last year? Uh, All in the family. family yeah. Uh, this year it's family roots, and uh, you know it's 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 really you know for me it was it's really getting. Oh, back down I get to it. It's like a play on words. Ah. Ah. So it's spelled R O O T Z, like I, all I, hackerish and I stuff. I see and what you did there. Clever, huh? <laughs> 
Actually, what? I think Khalil came up with that one, Pilgrim. Um, but, uh, you know, the, the whole purpose of this year is to really get back down to what we're here for. And that's, you know, it's our hobby. It's what we like doing. It's our passion. It's our jobs. It's everything else. So getting everybody that's coming into the community, focusing on family, coming in and, and learning from others, as well as folks that have been here for a long time learning from others. I mean, I learn every single time I go to DerbyCon, I learn so much more that I didn't know before DerbyCon. And, you know, that might be what underwear Jack's wearing. It might be, you know, I'm me pushing, underwear? putting my finger through the hole in your ear. I like doing that. Um, I do, I do. But, you know, it's it's really about, you know, the, the whole family thing. And we had over 400 submissions this year. 400 submissions to the top. I mean, wow. we can only accept 140. It's crazy. And how many tracks are there? So there's – we actually eliminated one track. Uh, and the reason for that is last year I, I felt DerbyCon was a little too crowded. And um, so we actually scaled back the con a bit and uh, reduced it about uh, 300 people. And uh, So you issued 350 less badges, 300, essentially. Yep, yeah. yep. And, but there's a lot, too, because, I mean, you, you have 140 speakers, so those are badges. Then you have all the staff that support it. You right. have, you know, um, all the other folks that, that end up coming into it. So it's a lot of Like badges. I said to you the other day, those are all people that have to use the bathroom. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. Those are all men. Yeah, yeah <laughs> mostly men who have yeah. to use the bathroom. So. Well, and one thing to note, when you see the schedule, um, we have an uh, insane amount of, uh, of women presenting. And Good. I think that's just awesome. I mean, I, 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 I want to say like probably 10. And that's, you know, still, we're, you know, it's not an equal number in any way, shape, or form. Mm-hmm. But I think it's shown a lot more, um, you know, family feel, people being able to come to Derby kind of present and feel comfortable doing it um, in a predominantly, ma- you know, man-driven, you know, uh, community. So I'm really excited about that. Um, and it had nothing to do with it. It's just there were great talks. You know, I mean, definitely, you know, ones that we would have picked, whether it was a man or, or a woman in any capacity. So, you know, I'm really excited to see that, too. No, that's awesome. Yeah. I love to see different people presenting. And that's um, the thing. I mean, haven't presented before or some people who have uh, that are now coming to DerbyCon to release whatever they're, yeah. you know, releasing as uh, some of their projects and things like that. The biggest the biggest thrill that I get from DerbyCon and the reason why I do it every year is, is when I see someone tweet. Oh my God! I'm getting accepted to DerbyCon. I've never spoken before. I'm so excited. Yes, yes. That right there alone is everything. Mm-hmm. Like, and then I I get really depressed because I had to reject you know 300 and some people, or we right. had to reject as a as a board you know 300 and some people. You know that's terrible. That's the worst feeling that that you can ever have. So I didn't even sleep last night because I was all up, upset because I said to reject you know the the to not acceptance. Uh, yeah, I went so out yesterday. Acceptance and yep, the same time. Yeah, all went out the same time. And that's literally me copying, pasting, Python coding, ripping them out of the database, and sending out of the emails and everything. So I, you know, as soon as I hit that send button, I'm like, and I don't check my email for the rest of the the night because I don't want to you know see people responding. Yeah. yeah. Well, there's no hate mail. Everybody's really you know, responsive to it. And even though we sold out and, uh, you know, we had those submissions, I offered a discounted tickets to everybody that submitted uh, mm-hmm. to it, which is not something that we publicize, you know, usually. Um, just because we, we want them to be part of DerbyCon still. Right. And it's not that their talk wasn't good enough. It's just we had so many great talks. To choose from. It was really hard. Is there to like an alternates list or? Like uh, people that can still be continue to the, the speaker? Yeah, like what if a speaker, something happens to Yeah, a definitely. We have, we have um, kind of a backlog, you know, folks that we've selected as being, you know, it, literally we spent, it was funny, if you, if you hear our DerbyCon conference calls, they're absolutely well, hilarious. Like, as bad as the internal work calls? <laughs> they're, they're a lot worse, but uh, in a good way, in a good way. But, uh, you know, like uh, one of the guys that's on, on Dave DeSimon, he does the best Martin Boss pure hate impression I've ever heard in my entire <laughs> life. It's like, Hey, Adrian, you got the mic 2247G. Can you bring it up here? You know, I, I can't do the, the, the accent very well, but uh, he's got the best impression of, uh, of Martin that we ever hear. So that, that gets us going for a while, and, you know, we have a good time with it. But we spent a lot of time going through Call for Papers. Um, so how do, you, how do you deal with the people that are upset that they didn't get a ticket? You know, we haven't experienced that. I mean, you know, I think people are disappointed, and, you know, as soon as I see that, I try to direct message them and say, hey, man, I'm so sorry, you know, or if I get a response back, you know, I try to – and what we also do um, is I send, I send the initial non-acceptances out, and then I manually – and we as a team manually go through and send them exactly why we didn't end up accepting and things that they can do to improve next year so that they can get in because we want to oh, nice. hear them. What know? about attendees, though? What about attendees? Like attendees that say, "Oh, I I, could, I didn't get a badge, or it sold out." And I, really I know want that to does go. that does suck. Um, and th- and that's that's a fundamental debate that we had last year and the year before that because you know DerbyCon's getting more and more popular every year, and so what we decided is that you know listen, we opened up tickets in February, mm-hmm. you know, and so you had February until about two weeks ago before they sold out. You know, it's not a mad rush to get the tickets. You have plenty of time to get them. So the folks that really wanted to go had the opportunity to get them. Gotcha. And we don't want to be, 
you know, DEF CON. DEF CON's its own glamour and its own type of conference, and it's it's insane and amazing. And, and come one, come all. Yeah, you know, it's 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 fifteen thousand right. plus people. Well, you know, but I've been going there since Alexis Park, and and that was you know for me like some of the core things that I remember as as kind of growing up in this community. And we don't we don't want to go big. We don't want to go to ten thousand people. We don't want to go to five thousand people. We like it where it's at. And I think you know the people that are there respect one another. Um, you know, and, and it's really about learning and, and coming together as a community to figure out things to fix it or to break it or whatever. Uh, but that's what the whole, you know, inspiration for DerbyCon was. And we hope as a team to be able to keep that. And we, we discuss it almost every call. It's like, you know, the demand keeps getting more and more. What do we right, do about right. that? Do we expand? Do we not? You know, and, and as of right now, we're in a holding pattern. We're going to keep it where it's at. So the important question is, how's the bar going to be staffed for beer this year? <laughs> Wait, no, you mean there's two <laughs> things. There's staffing yeah. of the bar, and then there's uh, stocking the of, stock the bar. Okay, of the liquor. Both. <laughs> both. So we, we actually have more funds allocated now to the beer this year than we did last year, the year before, and probably equally combined. And we actually have uh, additional stations. So um, you'll be able to get access to beer much quicker than you were before and yes. have it free-flowing throughout the whole party. Now, this will be a party yes. Friday night and Saturday sure. night. Affected Mushroom on Saturday. And um, so, if, uh, so the way it's going to start on Saturday – uh, we'll ha definitely have sci-fi and dual core and infected playing uh, Saturday. We'll also have dual core doing Friday as well, as well as a couple others. I think Rance is going to come back again nice. and a few other folks. He did amazing um, and great guy. Uh, so we're going to have all of that going on Friday as well. And plus, you know, hopefully one big surprise that I'm working on. So, so now how about the uh, the actual hotel bar? Are they going to stockpile enough? So they, they, I think they've learned their lesson. They taunted. Year. Remember they taunted they us did. last year? Yeah. <laughs> they actually taunted us. They're like, <laughs> they Der Derby Count, we're ready for you. And, it, you know, I had a picture of like, f you know, like 40 Dude. kegs stacked up and everything. And then I think the last tweet we saw from him is we tap or something like that. And it was all the kegs that were just completely destroyed and dead. <laughs> <laughs> yep. And you know the records we beat, right? Yes. Yeah. We, we'll, we'll tell our listeners. Yeah. So la last year, if you, if you weren't at Derby Con, um, so Hyatt, you know, is obviously a massive conglomerate of, of uh, you know, hotels and things. Apparently, we held the, the – um, on Saturday, we held the uh, record for being the second best amount of alcohol consumption period in all of Hyatt history. Oh, my God. I didn't know that. <laughs> yeah. All, in all so of Hyatt's who was, ever. who was they, first bet? Who was first? That was us Friday. <laughs> <laughs> so, so we hold <laughs> Friday and Saturday records <laughs> for the most alcohol for consumption all of, of any ever, Hyatt. Ever. Ever. Yeah. And what's, what's great about that, too, is, um, you know, it, it's a great relationship with the Hyatt. You know, we talk to each other back and forth and everything, but they love us. I mean, every time we get done, they're like, the people here are just so amazing. And, you know, we had the... Well, that's what gets me, too, is yeah. we say that we drank all that booze. And Not I, one internet. We all contributed to that at, on this panel as oh, well. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. But <laughs> the thing that gets me is there's, there, like, from what you say, there's very few or even no incidents really to speak of. No. And, you know, the, the, the security guard that's there... You know, and it, he's usually, usually talking to the same police officer that ends up coming every year. And they actually get a little pissed because they're like, you guys are the exact opposite of human behavior that we're experiencing our whole lives. Like, you know, the drunker you get, the more civil and polite you get. And you guys are playing freaking chess at 3 a.m. and you're all drunk. You, like, you can't get up and walk, but yet you you're phenomenal chess. at chess. <laughs> like Egypt, you know? Yeah, exactly. Egypt is, you know, can barely walk and, and he's, he's, he's killing everybody in chess, you know? And that's, 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 awesome. that's, hey, that's I, the cool thing. Last year uh, on Saturday night, I remember uh, I was checking IDs, but when I would pop out, the, the cop, the, the, the police officer that worked that door – was so bored that he would like take the escalator up and the elevator down just because there was nothing for him yeah. to do. So you like take the escalator up and look around, look around. And you know, that's then he'd get in the elevator and go down one floor and then he'd go back to the door and he'd, you know, look yeah. at drunks on the sidewalk being belligerent and he'd come back in and we're all like, hey, party. You know? <laughs> <laughs> and I think that's a testament to like Nick Hitchcock who runs security there, um, you know, and Banshee obviously, um, and a lot of the team that, that supports, you know, the security staff because, I mean, whenever there's an incident, you know, we're not looking to get pissed at somebody and boot them out. We're like, listen, man, you're getting out of control. Let's tone it down a bit. You know, we had a couple of guys try to sneak into the party last year without a badge. We're like, listen, just go get your badge and come back. If you don't have a badge, we'll see what we can do. Right. You right, know, it's right. not it's not about trying to screw people. It's about, you know, making sure everybody gets home safe and has a good time, you know, and that's that's the whole mantra of DerbyCon. At, at the size that it is, um, it, it's like other events. You know, ShmooCon's a bit bigger, but it's the same size, same thing. It, it's friend of a friend. You don't have to go beyond, you know, there, there aren't six degrees of separation. No. Right. You put the if if somebody needs to be escorted back to their room or something, you know, if somebody needs to hold somebody's hair while they puke in the toilet, 
uh, hold their beard. beard out of the way. Uh, you know, there's all you've got to do is ask, and, and it's like, oh, hey, yeah, I, let's let's go. You know. Well, I had that. Um, I was. Uh, it was um, the Saturday night last year at the party, and I remember going in the bathroom, and someone was basically trying to get to make it to the ba- to the bathroom to throw up. So I picked him up and I put him in the bathroom and I held his head there while he's puking. I don't care, you know. Good. I mean, just you see somebody in need and you help him out, yeah. you know, and then you get him another beer, you know. Just right. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you got room for more. Yeah, <laughs> hey, you just purge. You're good, man. You just let's go, you know. Uh, but room uh, for more, yeah, it, it reminds me. There's nothing like uh, you know that CVS right down the street. Yeah, yeah, there's upstairs. Like going, yeah, there's nothing like going in there at odd hours, uh, looking like me. And grabbing an armload of uh, Pedialyte and an armload of champagne to make Pedialyte mimosas. Uh, That's champagne over cure. The, I'll say I have no girls, idea what that is. but the, the girls, the, you know, they look at me and it's like, hey, can you give me a hand taking this out to my van? It's the one without windows. Uh, <laughs> <but> <laughs> <laughs> it's free candy pointed on the outside. <laughs> <laughs> No, so no, you have to check that. It's my I fall for that cure. every year, too, Jack. Yeah, I yeah. I'm in there and I just I wake I, I like it, but yeah, I wake yeah. up, you know, yeah. sore. Yeah. Um, so it would tell us about some of the other things happening uh, at DerbyCon. Are there, like, contests or, like, things Ton. happening yeah. outside of the talks and, and things like that? Yep. So uh, we have a Cali, uh, Cali Workshop that's going to be going on all day Saturday. Um, and, it, and it's progressional, so it starts off basic and goes starts to, starts to get really advanced with, you know, how you can leverage Cali, how you can use it and everything. And uh, so offensive security is going to be there in full force uh, running that. Uh, we have a ton of events going on. Uh, we have everything from, obviously, the Capture the Flag. Uh, we moved Capture the Flag from the one room it was in before. Mm-hmm. So the, I don't know if you remember the theater room. Yep. Yes. So the Capture the Flag is now in the theater room, so we're going to be playing movies and techno music and all that good stuff there. And then you can also do the Capture the Flag and chill and relax and you know comfortably because those guys are in there for hours and hours and hours. We want to make sure that they had you know some nice places to kind of sit their butts on. Um, and then uh, also Space Rogue, uh, this hasn't actually been announced yet, but uh, Space Rogue is going to be working uh, on uh, kind of like the Hack the Derby uh, type thing where, you know, you, you have a couple different, uh, um, you know, ways of building your hat out, hacking it, you know, doing cool uh-huh. things with your derby cool. hat. Um, so we have cool ones like that. Uh, we have, you know, uh, the RV of Doom is going to be there. Um, a lot of different events going on throughout the entire time. Workshops, uh, free workshops, you know, uh, Calvary will be there. The I'm Calvary movement will be there with Josh Corman. You don't need a badge for that. <laughs> um, so we're gonna do when we talk about calvary it's got to eat the block yeah, yeah. so yeah. yeah it's gonna be you know going back and forth with the calvary and you don't need a ticket for that um, you so you just can just kind of go you just in need coconut shells right? coconut yeah. shells yeah. <laughs> see and see and automatically <laughs> sigh popped into my head <laughs> but there's a lot of stuff going on. you're not gonna be bored i mean the, the talks you, themselves Josh. are amazing uh-huh. um and, and you get some training beforehand as well yeah, so we have uh, – and what was crazy is, you know, training is usually a little bit slower to go um, before the actual tickets sell out, and, and training actually sold out before the tickets did. Now, and if you buy a ticket for training, do you automatically get a badge? For absolutely, the? yep. Okay. You get it, as soon as you buy a training ticket, you automatically get a badge, yep. uh, you know, for the for the con itself. That's also one thing we had to uh, equate for as well. I mean, that's, you know, I think 300 people going through the training as well. Mm-hmm. Um, but, uh, yeah, I mean, we'll lo- we're looking at probably around – uh, 1,800 people this year, whereas last year was about 2,200. Gotcha. Uh, that's where we're hoping to get to. Nice. Yes. Yeah. Nice. Um, <coughs> so, uh, so are there going to be keynotes on both days? No. The way we usually do it is we have a keynote on uh, – and the reason – there's a specific reason for this. We, we have a keynote in, uh, or two um, initially the first day on Friday – and then uh, Saturday is n- it doesn't have any specific keynotes. And the reason for that is in order for us to um, change the rooms around and get everything, you know, set up appropriately, it takes time. And the, and the problem is, you know, we have so many talks going on throughout the entire day that we would lose about six talks to 12 talks, you know, just to be able to do it. So that was the main, you know, reason for it. We just have uh, two keynotes going on on, uh, on uh, Friday. Mm-hmm. All right. What else about DerbyCon? I don't see the key. So, so are listed. they are they bringing enough b- booze for us? Huh? Are they bringing enough booze for us? You know, we we've had discussions with the Hyatt. We, <laughs> we, we have, but, we, but the problem is, we have discussions every year with the Hyatt, sure. and they feel so prepared every year for us, and then they just get their their dreams get destroyed. Um, and we outdo ourselves every time. But that's and that's the thing. I mean, talking back to the family roots thing, you know, Friday night. You go downstairs, and the bar is packed mm-hmm. with people that you know, and everybody's social. Everybody's coming up to you. You know, everybody's approachable, and that's the thing that we want. And that's sure. you know, it's like, why do we move something like that? Why do we change something like that and make it bigger? Because, you know, maybe we can make it still successful, but it won't be like that anymore uh, when right. we go and move it. And that's right. our biggest thing. Yeah. Can, so you get, can you get them to bring back those nice crockery mugs that they had the first year? 
What were the mugs? I don't know. Uh, they had some special beer that they had there that the beer. Bourbon Barrel? No, it was different. They had this 